Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Said Dan channel. In a brand new interview that was just published this morning, Paul Gruel, who is Coinbase's chief legal officer, so he's their top in-house attorney, says that it's possible, and that's a quote, it's possible that XRP will be relisted on, on their exchange. Now, of course, that's pending the outcome of the SEC v. Ripple lawsuit, but I'll, I'll, let me just say this. I have always believed that the fact that XRP was delisted on Coinbase was not because they have some sort of fundamental disdain for XRP. And, and I'll just pause note there even. Like, even if they do, that I just I don't believe that that's the reason that they, they do what they do. If anybody at the highest levels, even if they have some sort of disdain for XRP, I don't believe that's the reason that uh, that they delisted XRP. And also, there's no, no proof for that. Now, if you have fundamental proof, then I will immediately change my perspective. If you show me proof that they did, and this is why so-and-so happened, fine. But I, I've always viewed it as a conservative business maneuver. You know, I always, uh, honestly, always uh, believe that, you know, they were absolutely linguini-spined until recently, you know, when it comes to all the legal threats, especially from the SEC. And, and perhaps now they've developed a bit of a backbone. And uh, I, I do believe that Coinbase would like to relist XRP because it's one more coin for them to make money on. And, and look, what happened here in this interview today, it gave us the first peek behind the veil that I've ever seen from a high-level Coinbase executive on the topic of relisting XRP. They've been completely hushed, so far as I know, completely hushed on, on that topic for over two years. You know, ever since the uh, the lawsuit was filed, and the response is honestly very reasonable, and it's it's the response I personally expected. So, look, we do now know for sure that once the Ripple lawsuit is over, Coinbase absolutely one hundred percent will consider relisting XRP. So I'm going to share with you the relevant portions from this interview having to do with this exact topic. Um, I actually can transcribe this information myself. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics. But just as a hobby and just for fun. And so this is Paul Gruel right here on your screen, Coinbase's chief legal officer. But um, let me just set the table a little bit. I want to make sure that everybody is caught with speed and has full context uh, which I think is necessary to fully appreciate the, the, the topic of conversation here. So there is this article from Cointelegraph from February 10th of this year titled, Community Urges Coinbase to Relist XRP as CEO Fights for Staking. Amid Coinbase cryptocurrency exchange standing up for crypto staking and economic freedom, the online community has also urged the company to support XRP. On February 9th, Coinbase's chief legal officer, Paul Gruel, claimed that Coinbase's staking program is not affected by rival exchange Kraken shutting down its staking services. The executive argued that Kraken's staking platform was essentially offering a yield product, while Coinbase's staking services are fundamentally different and are not securities. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong also took to Twitter on Thursday to declare that the exchange will continue to oppose the government when it comes to protecting services like staking. He complained about the lack of clear staking regulations, saying, quote, We will keep fighting for economic freedom. Our mission at Coinbase. Some days being the most trusted brand in crypto means protecting our customers from government overreach, end quote. Now, of course, with... I know all of you are in the XRP community, right? We're, we're all in this together. Upon reading that for the first time, and even reading it again now today, it's just like an eye roll, face palm, audible sigh moment. <sighs> God damn it! <laughs> because of course, I'm, I'm sorry. Where was the protection a couple years ago? Where was that? Where where was where was your backbone then? Oh, that's right. You had linguini spines back at the end of 2020, right? The linguini spines. That's the problem. You little noodle back sons of bitches. And then take a look at this. Coinbase's earnings report comes with dose of crypto anarchism. And so again, to be clear, uh, to anybody that is frustrated with Coinbase, I totally get it. I'm feeling a bit of frustration as well, even though I understand the decision early on. Uh, it's just, the, the <laughs> it's kind of rich seeing the way that they're, they're approaching things now. It's, it's like Coinbase having taken the approach that they took, you know, bowing to, uh, to the SEC effectively. 
back in, in uh, late 2020. That's a decision that they made. Did they actually think that that would, you know, get them off the SEC's radar? Did they think that that was a long-term solution here? They should have known back then, frankly, that, uh, you know, the SEC would continue to be gunning for them. But anyway, so there's Coinbase's earnings report comes with dose of crypto anarchism. This is, this is from uh, February 22nd of this year. There's a showdown brewing between the U.S.'s largest crypto exchange and its main regulator, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Driving the news, Coinbase Global's earnings report Tuesday night delivered what was largely expected, revenue eroded by crypto winter and net profit losses. The surprise was buried in the exchange's annual filing, and it signals that it's digging in for a fight. So check this out, and this is another thing that I'd say rightfully so, has our community a bit miffed, to put it lightly, not so thrilled, but check this out. Here is, here is the quote from a risk disclosure uh, from that filing, which, and the reason they put this out even is because they're a publicly traded company, so you have to disclose your risks. It's, it's a requirement of the SEC, funny enough. But uh, here, here is the quote. We may determine not to remove a particular crypto asset from Coinbase spot market, even if the SEC or another regulator alleges that the crypto asset is a security, end quote. And so, of course, why wasn't that your attitude back in 2020? I, I just, I think that they've had an evolving perspective. And so now that they have relisted XRP, I think part of the reason that they're not going to be relisting XRP before the finality of this case is because if this, if, if things really go south, the SEC would, in all likelihood, ultimately come after Coinbase, and they'd use a proof as proof that the uh, that Coinbase knew what they were doing was wrong as the fact that they did they by delisting XRP, that was a tacit admission that listing it in the first place was a mistake. So then relisting it obviously is that much worse. That's the argument that the SEC would ultimately make. And so I understand why now that they've already made the mistake of delisting XRP, I understand why right now is not the time for them to list it just in case, just from. You know, you're just talking about some doing a risk analysis. I get it, even though in all likelihood you'd be just fine. And I think it would be, you know, the right thing to do to just go full balls to the walls against the SEC's perspective on this because they're on the wrong side of history. But it is what it is. So that said, it's in terms of specifically what was stated here from Paul Gruel, Coinbase's chief legal officer. Again, it came this morning in a brand new interview. Uh, from Tony on the Thinking Crypto YouTube uh, uh, Thinking Crypto YouTube channel, he interviewed Paul Gruel, and uh, and Tony uh, asked the following, quote, "So let's say in a scenario ruling from the judge in favor of Ripple, will Coinbase then say make the assessment? You know what? It looks like things are moving in the direction of XRP and Ripple and so forth. Uh, relist XRP or start trading? Question mark." Which is a perfectly, I'm so glad he asked that question. Because again, I've never seen an executive at Coinbase ask that question. And I feel like, I mean, maybe I missed it if, if anybody ever was, but I kind of <laughs> kind of thinking here, it, had that been asked by anybody of note, whether it's Paul Gruel or Brian Armstrong, whatever, I'm pretty sure there would have been some very obvious articles about it in crypto media, which I scour every single day. <laughs> but but okay, maybe I missed some things, but I don't think it's happened. So this is the first that we're seeing. And it's, and it's good to see that they have the approach that they have, which given their current circumstances and the way that they've been handling all this to this point, I'll take it, honestly. But you, you guys tell me what you think. But here's the quote from Chief Legal Officer Paul Gruel. He said, and again, so the question is, are you going to relist XRP, restart trading, if, uh, you know, things are starting to look like it's moving in the, the direction of Ripple, get a favorable ruling effectively. And he says, it's possible. It would all, of course, depend upon the basis for the ruling the judge's legal reasoning, our assessment of whether or not an appeals court would affirm that decision. So a lot's going to depend on the particulars of how that court rules. I know that's not going to be terribly satisfying to some, but you know, we do have a responsibility as a publicly listed company to tread carefully in this area and with respect to any token that's the subject of federal court litigation. But I'm very, very eager, as much as anyone else, to see how the court rules. And what I can say is as soon as we have that ruling, we will put in our process to see if we need to revisit that listing decision, end quote. So, look, again, I don't think that this is some sort of attack on XRP, the fact that all this happened. I know some people, and it's easy, to, I, I can understand that, I can sympathize like, if you feel that way. But in terms of if you just remove the emotion, they're a business, they're, they're just trying to protect themselves. So I get it. Um, 
I, I, and I really do get it. So that's why, like, if, if you've been following what I've been saying on this topic for over two years now, I do, to a degree, certainly sympathize with exchanges like Coinbase, who halted the trading of XRP or delisted XRP because they're put in this box where it's a fast-moving environment. They're trying to figure stuff out. And most uh, most exchanges, they took the linguini spine approach. They, they And I understand that. You know, they were under attack effectively as well. I understand all of that. But it still is extra frustrating. And of course, I get that side of it too when they say, well, you know, if the SEC says certain things are securities, we may not delist them. So I think in hindsight, they're probably realizing we should have just had this approach back in 2020. But the fact that they already made this decision, I feel like the threshold has been crossed. And I just, I, I think that it would be, and I get what they're doing. At this point, frankly, from a legal perspective, it probably would be a misstep, even though I, just like all of you, want to see XRP relisted. I think it should be relisted. But it would probably technically be the most legally prudent thing to do to just wait for the ruling. And especially at this point, any day now we're expecting a ruling from Judge Torres, there's a really good chance, in fact, that something's going to come down this very month. So you may not have to wait very long. And so it kind of depends. Like if you have uh, a district court ruling from Judge Torres, especially if she specifies that secondary market transactions are not part of uh, you know, her ruling, especially even if, like even if they go after, she goes after Ripple and says, hey, uh, you did break the law for X, Y, Z reasons, whatever it is. As long as there's clarity for secondary markets, that's good for us as XRP holders. We'll still be fine even if Ripple technically loses. And what's pretty clear from his his comment here in this interview is, is that that's pretty much what they're looking. That's what it seems like to me. That's what they're looking for. If they have that, because look, they don't need to wait. Um, and it's, I think it's pretty obvious from the way that he worded the, you know, his thoughts on this. You know, the fact that there could be an appeal and likely would be an appeal after this court's over, regardless of who wins. So, like, say it's it's positive for, for Ripple. And, uh, you know, it, it, it seems like there should be clarity for XRP based on, say, Judge Torres says, yeah, secondary markets, of course. You know, that's not that's not my ruling against Ripple here, even if there is that. However it pans out, what I'm saying is, it, should there be an appeal, I it doesn't sound like that's something that would prevent Coinbase from relisting XRP. I, I suspect that it's more likely than not, and it's just a hunch, I suspect more likely than not they would relist XRP. And then if you say it does go up, so things look good for XRP, and then it goes to the the next level, goes to the appellate court. If you get a ruling then uh, against uh, Ripple or something that would harm the status of XRP in the United States, then they just delist it again. And, and they'd be able to argue that the whole time they were just going by the letter of the law in the moment. They would easily be able to argue that, especially if they don't relist XRP before ruling from Judge Torres. So I, I, I don't know for sure, but I, I and again, it'll, it will come down to the specifics of how Judge Torres, how strongly Judge Torres words what she words, if she is uh, trying to make sure that secondary markets are protected. And I have a hunch that she will, based on the fact that she wanted to listen to all his amicus briefs and all this perspective from all the other participants in the ecosystem. It's just, we're going to have to wait and see a little bit, but we're almost there. But I just, I have this hunch, and it's not going to take them that long to figure it out. It took them a matter of, how many days did it take for them to announce? Was it like one, two, three, four, five? I can't remember how many days after the SEC f sued Ripple that uh, Coinbase was like, yeah, we're going to delist XRP. It didn't take long. We knew in 2020, if memory serves. There were some exchanges that announced in January, maybe Coinbase is one of them. But my, my point being... Even if it, even if it took a couple weeks, the point is we know in short order Coinbase intends to relist XRP, and I think that they'll want to do that because plus it strengthens their case. Their argument was that hey, we had the right analysis in the first place. The court agrees, so of course we're going to put it back up because we were right in the first place, and then it can argue that it strengthens their case. So even if they had disdain for XRP, which I'm not convinced they do, but even if but maybe they do, if they do. They'll still relist XRP because it's good for them from a legal perspective anytime they want to argue anything else in the future. Because look behaviorally at what they're doing. So those are my initial thoughts on this. You guys let me know what you're, you're thinking here. And I know some people may agree and some people may disagree in terms of what, you know, the intent or thoughts behind Coinbase doing what they're doing. And I get it. So like, even if I, even if you disagree with me, like I still respect where you're coming from for sure. And it's, you know, it's just an opinion's an opinion. But um, I, I still think what is right will ultimately be done, you know, in the district court level. And I have a hunch that Coinbase and all the other exchanges, they're going to be relisting XRP. But again, it does depend on exactly how that ruling's written. But but again, even if Ripple loses, that does not necessarily mean that Coinbase won't relist XRP. You've got to see how Torres 
uh, responds to secondary market transactions. And I do believe that it's highly likely she'll address that given all the information that she wanted uh, from all the uh, amicus participants. So we'll see there. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.